Oh, what is going on, football fans? Back at it with another New York Giants video. I was going to do a video as soon as I got home from walking my dog. I asked you guys, since it's huge news, um, if you guys would rather me just go live. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about the New York Giants just made a huge change in the coaching staff unexpectedly. Now, if they were ever going to make a change, you know, within season, you would think they would do it now at the bottom. You have two weeks to prepare. You have now two weeks to bring a new head coach, Guglielmo. I think his nickname is Googs. I did a video on him in the offseason. The New York Giants brought him in for an interview. He has ties to Joe Judge, coach with the New England Patriots from 2014 to 2015, coach with Tom Coughlin at Boston College. Coughlin then brought him over to the New York Giants where he was the assistant O-line coach from 04 to 08. When the New York Giants had the best offensive line in football 2008, we all remember that before Burr shot himself, then got a job. I forget where. I think the Jets were his next stop. He had several stops along the way, um, and he was widely credited with turning around that Colts offensive line. The Colts, of course, had the best offensive line in 2018 when they brought Frank Reich over to be the head coach. Um, and then, you know, he came over. They drafted Quentin Nelson, and they had a dramatic shift um, with that offensive line. He was widely credited with that was later relieved of duty, got into an altercation with a player. He also wasn't the choice of Frank Reich. He was initially hired by Josh McDaniels, who was the initial hire with the Indianapolis Colts. So some people said he may, may have moved on due to that. Then he coached for the Miami Dolphins last year under Flores. And, of course, the New York Giants have had a habit of picking off some of Flores' coaches, which is probably why they brought him in there in the first place to be interviewed. The, the, uh, the quarterback coach um, they brought over from there. Um, along with uh, a couple of other coaches they brought over. Oh, of course, the uh, Patrick Graham, the defensive coordinator, they brought over from the Miami Dolphins. But I'm just as shocked as you guys because, and I'm going to get into why this may or may, and, you know, I, I heard all the details. We're going to talk about it in the stream. Um, but I'm shocked that they made the coaching change because, you know, naturally we all felt like the offensive line was getting better. And this was a guy we were all excited about. Mark Colombo had a lot of energy, um, had ties to Jason Garrett, who, of course, is the offensive coordinator. So I'm a little bit surprised now what has come out is that Joe Judge has had he's had to pay extra focus on the offensive line over the last two or three weeks, and that's something that Belichick has done in the past. And usually, when that happens, Judge, of course, wants to be a CEO. He wants to oversee anything, uh, everything. He felt like he had to put more emphasis on the offensive line, and he decided to move on from Mark Colombo. And now they're going to bring in a guy he's more familiar with, a guy that's been with the New York Giants before, and a guy when it comes to X's and O's is a very credited offensive line coach. He's definitely got some uh, cons to his uh, resume as well, though. Um, so we'll see. Obviously, there was an altercation with the coaching staff, and Joe Judge decided that this was in the best interest of the football team to move on and go a different direction with a new offensive line coach, and hopefully it works out. Listen, I'm going to trust Joe Judge. Joe Judge has been a smart coach at, to date. This was not a Joe Judge guy, if I had to guess. I think we all agree that Jason Garrett was not a Joe Judge guy. I think Jason Garrett was more Mara influence, and my guess is that – bringing over Colombo was Jason Garrett influence, being that he was the offensive coordinator and he fit, and he probably felt that he fit his scheme best. To me, this is Joe Judge analyzing the job that he's doing and saying, no, 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 no more. We're going to go with my guy. And as Giants fans, we have to hope it works out and we have to trust Joe Judge, our new head coach. Pete, man, thank you so much for the love, man. I appreciate it. He says, Joe Judge Dread bot slapped that cowgirl out of the building. Love this movie. He was running. Thomas Judge is saving him. Well, I'll tell you what, from what has come out from Mike Garofalo, if that is accurate, um, that's basically what he said. Um, and, and you've seen Andrew Thomas play better over the last three weeks or so. Um, and maybe Judge felt like it was a lot more due to him than the offensive line coach. And that's why he decided to make the move. I don't know. Uh, Brian, man, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Judge has been spending most of his time with the O-line, resulted in an improved O-line. Yeah, that's what I was just saying, Brian. That's what came out according to Mike Garofalo. And it makes sense why they made the move. Listen, I was a big Colombo guy. The players seemed to like him in Dallas. Seemed to be a rah-rah guy. He spoke very highly about the guys on this offensive line, Nick Gates. Um, but, you know, we don't get, we don't get you know, information about what goes on in the organization. We don't know what's going on behind the scenes. And it came out that judges had to spend a lot of extra time on that offensive line. And I think that's why they made this move. I think that's why they made this move. Uh, stolen base cards, man. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. He says, I am not sure about this move. Also, stand up. Listen, I'm, I'm just as surprised as everybody else. I'm out walking my dog. I'm out walking Neo, and I get the, I get the uh, notification on my phone, and I retweeted, and it's exactly what I said to myself, WTF. I was like, you got to be kidding me, you know, because we all saw the strides that this offensive line was making over the last three or four weeks, and I'm not a guy that believes in rocking the boat, but news has come out. 
that there's it seems like there's legitimate reasoning as to why the New York Giants made this move. Um, you know, and we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it throughout the stream. But thank you, to, thank you to everybody for being here. I really do appreciate it, man. Um, are you streaming the NBA draft tonight? Yes, Danny. I was going to do that anyway. I just felt like this was big news, and I, I knew that you guys would probably want to go live and talk about it with one another. Uh, but I will be live streaming the NBA draft. I have to. Even, I don't even. What does it start at seven? I know the Knicks traded up. They got the uh, eighth pick, a twenty third pick. So I'll be live for that. I'll do the Knicks picks, um, and then we'll call it a night. I'm not going to do the whole second round, especially because the Knicks don't have a second round pick, and I'm a Knicks fan. But yes, I will be doing that. Um, let's see, what we got here. This was a good move, Tana. Look at Mike Rob. Yeah, no, no, Simon. I'm giving it the benefit of the doubt, Simon. I'm not bashing the move. I'm not bashing the move. I'm giving it the benefit of the doubt. I listened to the video by Mike Garoppolo, and this guy is a very credited offensive line coach. I made a video on this. I posted it on Twitter. If you guys want to check it out, if you follow me on Twitter, um, it was it was an 11 minute video breaking down his credentials and you know his accomplishments as an offensive line coach throughout his career. And he's a very credited offensive line coach. So we have to hope it works out. And it seems to be much more of a Joe Judge guy um, than Colombo was. Colombo has ties to Garrett. Uh, this this guy has ties to Judge. Judge coached with him for two years in New England. He coached with Flores at uh, Miami last year. So he's done. A, he did a great job with the Colts as well. And he's a former New York Giant. He was the op, the assistant offensive line coach with um, um, Tom Coughlin from 04 to 08. He also coached with Coughlin at Boston College. Pete, man, thank you very much. Maybe he was getting rave reviews from Dallas because he has had three Hall of Famers on that line. Well, Pete, yeah, that was that was the concern by a lot of New York Giants fans when we brought him in here. Yeah, you could do great when you've got unbelievable talent on an offensive line, but how are you going to do when you got to coach younger players? And to his credit, but it seems like it was more Judge. It seemed like the offensive line was turning around. I was so encouraged by it, but Judge must have saw something that he felt needed to be changed. And like I've said all along throughout this entire process, I'm going to trust Joe Judge. Joe Judge is a smart guy. I don't think he's just making changes to make to make changes. Nick, man, thank you very much, man. Who do you think the Knicks? Uh, who do you want the Knicks to draft? I want I want to draft the shooting guard out of Florida State, Vassal. Um, I think that's how you pronounce his last name, Vassal. He's a six seven. He's a three and D player. That's who I'm looking at. But um, I wouldn't be upset if they took a point guard. A lot of people haven't taken Halliburton, Kiara Lewis. I would prefer the shooting guard. I think we need to stretch the floor. But I'm not gonna be upset either way. Raymond, man, thank you very much. Halliburton or Hayes, I like both guys. Yeah, if they're going point guard, that seems to be two of the names that you're hearing a lot. I'm hearing Halliburton a lot. Halliburton seems to have some upside, um, but I'd much prefer the shooting guard. But we'll see tonight, man. I'm excited to see where it goes. OGR, man, thank you very much, man. I may not comment on your videos as much as I used to, but to this day, even though I am also a YouTuber, I still get most of my news from you. So thank you, my man. Appreciate the job you're doing. OGR, are you kidding me? OGR is one of the nicest guys I've ever met. OGR, are you kidding me? Go over there and subscribe. You almost had a thousand subs, so go over there, subscribe. I think he's got 972. Um, I watch your videos too. I just don't comment all the time. I, I, I try to watch as many videos as I possibly can. Um, but uh, yeah, OGR, man, thank you so much for all the support. You always show my channel. You've been with me since damn near the beginning, um, and Jeff's a great guy. So thank you for being here, buddy. And yeah, I'm, I, I'm curious to get everybody else's takes on this move. I'm curious to get everybody else's takes on this move. Let me know what you guys think. Gano got COVID. Think he clears for the Bengals game. T Savage, another great subscriber of mine. What's going on, T Savage? Um, as far as Gano goes, I don't know. You know, it's up in the air. It's two weeks, but you know, Will Hernandez took more than two weeks. He missed two games due to it. So I hope, I would think at most he'll miss a game, and maybe the New York Giants will bring somebody in as a short-term fix. Um, but we'll see. You know, at most it'll be a game, but I hope he's back. He's been probably our most important player on that offense, as crazy as that sounds. Klein, man, thank you very much, man. Uh Jason McIntyre is a slug. What a, what a clown. Jason, Jason McIntyre is a slug. What a clown. Jason McIntyre. Hold on one second. I want to make sure. Why is, my, why is my internet going so slow? I hate when I do that. When I, oh, Jason. Oh, I was, I was checking to see who you were referring to. Jason McIntyre is the, um, is the guy that reported the story about the fighting. Yeah, I saw that. Like five of my subscribers added me on that, and then I immediately deleted it when you guys told me it was fake. But I figured because everybody was at me, it was real. So I yeah, I just saw it. I'm like, what? Um, but yeah, I deleted it immediately. Um, he came out and said that they got into a fist fight and Joe Judge got beat up. Uh, crazy stuff. Absolute insanity. But yeah, that's that was proven to be false. So that did not happen. Anybody that heard that that thinks that may be true, that is false. They did not get into a fist fight. Joe Judge at Columbo did not get into a fist fight. To me, this was calculated. Joe Judge knew he was doing this at the bye week. 
um, from what you're hearing from Mike Garofalo. Um, he, he's been, he'd been helping coach the offensive line for the last two or three weeks. This was calculated. They knew they were doing that, this at the bye week, and, and that's why they waited till now. Uh, Hub, man, thank you very much. I appreciate it. If Judge is reason for the line improved, then fire away. Yeah, and that's what it seems like. Hub, that's what it seems like. And by the way, if you guys have not checked out the Hub, had a great time on his channel last night. Another great guy, another Giants content creator. Um, and he's definitely moving up, man. Had over 100 people in there. You're definitely growing, man. So congratulations on that. And yeah, at the end of the day, if Judge... Judge, when he came here, said he didn't want to be a hands-on coach. He said he wanted to be a CEO. He said he wanted to oversee everything. He wanted to let his coaches do the job. Well, when he has to get in and do the nitty-gritty, well, that tells you something. That tells Judge, if I got to do something extra here, I want to bring in a guy where I don't got to do something extra here. And I think that was the line of thinking here. Zeke, man, thank you very much, man. This can't be football-related. Not by an in-season change because Joe Judge spends time with the O-line. He prides himself on letting his coaches coach. You may, Zeke, you may be right, and maybe there will be maybe there will be more more details that come out on this. All I'll say is this, and, and you know, I, I'm going to remain optimistic with this team. I'm not going to let a move like this go, make me go crazy. But all I'll say is this: the guy that they brought in, Coach Googs, is a very now that now he's dead, now you watch my video. You know, he got into an altercation with a player, and I personally think that was the main reason why he left the Colts. But regardless, the guy is a very accomplished offensive line coach. And I remember when they interviewed him, I was completely on board with the New York Giants potentially bringing him in. He's got ties to judge. I still think he's a guy that could definitely get the job done and coach this team up. Maybe it, maybe there's something more to the story that we will not know. Um, maybe ever. We won't, we may not know. Deep Ron, man, thank you so much, man. Colombo not wanting to have an O-line assistant and being fired is on him. Seems like an ego move that judges are going to tolerate respect. Listen, Deep Ron, one thing that you got to respect about Joe Judge more so than anything else, he don't take shit from nobody. This guy, he don't care if you're a player, if you're a coach, if you don't buy in, you're gone. And maybe that has something to do with it. I'm, you know, he's trying to instill a winning culture here, man. PTA Sports, my man, going over there, check him out. He says, protect Joe Judge. Listen, man, Joe Judge is the man, dude. I'm buying into Joe Judge. I'm not going crazy, man. Uh, I, I, this is this is a judge decision. I'm going to get behind it. The guy, the guy, the guy's gotten best since he's been here. Uh, the, everything's been working out so far, as far as I'm concerned. This is a Joe Judge influence decision, and I'm getting behind him. He wants to bring in the guy that he feels like better fits this football team. That's the way I look at it. Whether it be to you know something on the football field or whether it be something else. Myg forever, man. Thank you very much, man. Coach Googs was our assistant online coach in 2007. Yeah, from 04 to 08, coached with um, Coughlin at Boston College. Coughlin liked him so much, he brought him over. And uh, then he got promoted to the Jets offensive line coach. I believe that was the first team after the fact. But, yeah, he was widely credited with that. And his biggest, um, you know, credential, I guess you could say, would be with the Indianapolis Colts, where he completely flipped that offensive line from, like, the worst to the best or one of the best uh, from 17 to 18. Of course, adding a guy like Nelson helped. And Frank Reich is a great offensive mind, the new head, who was the new head coach over there at the time. But, uh, yeah, that, that was his biggest, biggest uh, you know, I guess feather in the cap. If, if you will. And that, and that's why he's gotten uh, great reviews. Um, let's see what we got here. Bigger Mike, Eagles fan. So take this for what you will. I wanted to pull him up because I love Bigger Mike, one of my best subscribers in all my streams. But take this for what you will. He's an Eagles fan. He doesn't want to see the Giants too well. The winning culture approach only works if you're winning. If the Giants start winning consistently, soon judges a home run. Can't run a team like Belichick without the respect for it. That's fair, Mike. That's fair, Mike. I agree with that. But what I'll say to that, Mike, is I think they're going to start winning soon. And I think they have the right team in place to be able to run a team this way because they're all very young and they're all going to buy in. None of them have attitudes. None of them have egos. This is a young team that they're building up from the beginning. And I think once this culture starts to get in place, that's when you start to bring in veterans with a lot of talent that can help put this team over the top. I think the Giants are definitely headed down the right direction. Peter, man, thank you very much, man. I think we need to look no further than Andrew Thomas. We drafted him fourth overall, and he was grading out as a category. Uh, as a, as a bus through seven weeks. He was getting better, though. He was getting better, though, which makes this, when I first heard it, which makes it a head-scratcher, Pete. That's what made it a head-scratcher. That's, that's why I was like, what the blank? You know, when I heard about it when I was walking Neo, um, because there was improvement with Thomas and everybody on the offensive line, but what came out from Garoppolo was Judge felt like he was the guy that was getting that improvement, and it wasn't so much the offensive line coach. So, I mean, my guess would be he felt like that, Colombo was holding Thomas and the offensive line back. John, man, thank you very much. I'm not shocked. Thomas's college coach was saying, what the blank? Did the Giants do? Good point, John. Really good point. Remember what came out 
when we when people were talking about is Thomas a bust? Is Thomas a bust? Remember the articles that came out that his former college coach says that Andrew Thomas looks like a completely different offensive lineman. I don't know what they're teaching him over there, so on and so forth. And it maybe it is not a coincidence that it coincides with the time when Judge kind of made that move and started working more with the offensive line. Maybe there was a lot of validity to that, John. My guess is that it, that makes sense. That adds up. Um, let's see what we got here. New Jersey Jake says, hopefully he gets coached up right now. Yeah. Well, listen, he's been playing better, man. He's been playing better over the last couple of weeks. So I think it's, I think we're trending in the right direction, but I don't think he would have made this move just to make this move. I think he feels like it was going to help the team. Nations, what's going on, man? Nations been with me forever. Always love to shout out Nations, man. Great supporter of mine. And thank you to everybody for all the support. Almost got a thousand people in already. You guys love the New York Giants. You guys support me whenever you can. I can't say thank you enough. Nation says, Entertainment Talking Sports, they brought in the new O-line coach to work alongside Colombo, but Colombo's reaction is what led him to being cut. That I didn't know. So they felt like he needed more help or, or whatever, and, and then he reacted poorly, and they fired him. Makes sense. What's going on, young man? Thank you very much, man. Judge just got fired, and so did Gettleman. That is a lie. <laughs> That's a lie. If that happened, I would explode in this chat. We would have 10,000 people in this chat if that happened. Um, but that's a lie. That's that. Joe Judge has at least two more years minimum uh, with the New York Giants. Don't expect any changes there. But thank you guys so much for being here. I really do appreciate it, man. Um, let's see. I don't believe it. I saw a report him and Judge fought. That's fake, Ryan. That was proven fake. It came out that it was fake. That was nonsense. I you, Somebody super chatted earlier what the guy's name was. I don't remember what his name was. Um, but that was fake. That was a fake report. That was somebody just trying to gain clout on uh, Twitter. Did not happen. Um, nice coffee. Yeah, nice. Somebody said nice coffee there, Pops. Uh, yeah, it's the uh, Darth Vader mug for all you Star Wars fans. I'm more of a Lord of the Rings guy myself, but I do like Star Wars. Raymond says, what's your confidence in Tibbs going into to his second season? What? Oh, into the season. Yeah, I was going to say it's not his second season. Um, I like Tibbs. Tibbs, Tibbs kind of reminds me of our head coach with the New York Giants. He's a disciplinarian. He's a guy that's gotten the most out of players in the past. I like him. A lot of Knicks fans weren't behind it when they made the hire. I think it's what they needed. I like him. He's defensive-minded. He's going to bring old-school values back to the New York Knicks, which is what we're all about. We love blue-collar basketball teams. I think that's the type of coach he is. I'm excited that he's the New York Knicks coach. Jared, man, thank you very much, man. Like you said, Judge is a forward thinker. Yeah. My guess is Judge, exactly. He's a forward thinker, and I think he saw something, and he said, this ain't going to work. I ain't going to beat around the bush. This ain't going to work. And either he's going to buy in, and apparently he didn't accept the assistant, or he's going to go. And Judge said, goodbye. Judge don't take shit. Judge don't take no nonsense. I, that's what I like about Joe Judge. B-Man says, hey, late congrats on the win. Maybe your guys can go on a run like my Jets did in 2002. I'm honestly surprised that Pat's assistant is actually looking good. Well, B-Man, don't be too surprised being that you're a Jets fan. In my opinion, the best coach in football this year, the coach of the year up to this point is in your division, and he's a former Bill Belichick disciple. Brian Flores has been phenomenal. And Joe Judge is very similar. So maybe that coaching tree is starting to improve. Uh, but V-Man, man, thank you very much, man. I appreciate it, man. Uh, let's see what we got here. I think I got a $2 donation there. for. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate that, James Earl, man. Thank you so much, buddy. Appreciate the support on the channel. I always see you in here, man. Thank you very much. Nice watch, by the way. What is that? Is that a Rolex? What do you got there, James? Thank you very much, buddy. Um, let's see what we got here. Nikki, Nikki's a great supporter of mine as well. He's been on the channel before. He says, Chris, it's a good thing. It's during the bye and not a regular week. Gives the players time to, exactly, Nikki. I think this was calculated. I think they knew they were doing this now for a couple of weeks, probably. I think this was calculated. They didn't just do this to do this. It's not a coincidence that they did it during the bye week. You have an extra week to get them acclimated, the players to get acclimated to what he wants to do. I'm not too worried about it. I think it's going to work fine. Zeke, man, thank you very much. He says, it's New York City, the media capital of the world. If Joe Judge was helping with the O-line for the past few weeks, wouldn't it have been leaked weeks ago? I mean, I don't think that – I don't know. I mean, that's something in practice you may not even notice. You know, you may not even notice. You may have just – and might, it might have been in the film rooms. It might have just been when they were breaking down film in the, in the, uh, within the facility. It's not necessarily something that the media would have gained uh, information to unless Judge leaked it out. I could see that definitely being an in-house type thing. I don't think that's crazy to think that. Pete, man, thank you very much, man. 
Have we heard if McKinney is going to play against the Bengals? I have not heard anything definitive there. It was definitely leaning that way. I would guess he will be activated for the Bengals game. He's got two more weeks. And I always thought, people have been asking me this for months, like when's McKinney coming back? When's McKinney coming back? I always thought it was going to be this game against the Bengals because it's after the bye and it gives everybody an opportunity to get more accustomed to their roles. Do I think he's going to play a full allotment of snaps? No. I think he'll get solely integrated into the defense, but um, I think you will. I would guess you'll see him out on the football field, at least in some capacity. Even if it's only 15, 20 snaps, I think you'll start to see McKinney play this week. That's my guess. Um, you have to start to get this guy some exposure and some experience down the stretch. Uh, let's see what we got here. New Jersey Jake says he's lonely. Jake needs some female companionship. Jake, we'll try to get that for you, buddy. Um, who do we know about the? What, what do we know about the O line coach? All right, I'll do, I'll do it real quick. I'll do it real quick. I'll give you I'll give you a quick breakdown of the O line coach. Um, started Boston College with Coughlin, came to the New York Giants from 04 to 08. Was the offensive line assistant, which they had the best offensive line in football in 2008. Then got promoted to become a full time offensive line coach. He wasn't an assistant anymore. I think with the Jets, he eventually ended up with the Colts in 2018 when he flipped them from the worst offensive line to the best after they drafted Quentin Nelson. He then coached last year for Brian Flores with the Miami Dolphins. He also has ties to Joe Judge with the New England Patriots from 2014 to 2015. So he's bounced around the league, but he's got a lot of good uh, credentials and he's been with the New York Giants before. And if you want to go back and look, I did a video on him actually. The New York Giants interviewed him this offseason before they decided to go with Colombo. I think Colombo was more Garrett-influenced. That's my guess, being that he coached with Garrett uh, with Dallas, Garrett being the uh, offensive coordinator for the Giants. But, yeah, there's a quick rundown of the new offensive, uh, uh, offensive line coach, Coach Googs. Uh, let's see what we got here. Shout out, Chris. What's going on there, Isaiah? Man, thanks for popping in the stream, buddy. Um, bu -bu 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 -bu. Uh, the fish fight story, it's not real. That's fake. Um, honestly, if I'm coach judge, I would start Parrot out of the bye and show that Thomas, his spot has to be earned. Parrot does look great. And by doing this, I think it'll motivate Thomas to get better. I don't think I'd bench Thomas. Thomas has been playing better. Thomas is playing well. I know we had the holding penalty this week, but overall Thomas has been playing better. I think you continue to do what you've been doing. Maybe some musical chairs and you make sure you get paired some reps, but I don't think Thomas should be benched. Uh, Thomas has been playing better and to get him to continue to play better. You have to keep playing him. I, I like the way Thomas has been playing the last three weeks or so. Um, let's see what we got here. Hey, do you think we will get rid of Ingram and Golden Tate? Uh, Alex, good question. Uh, in the offseason, yes, Golden Tate's gone. I And it has nothing to do with how he's acted with the team this year. It's strictly dollars and cents. It doesn't make sense to keep him. You save $6 million if you cut him. You could put that towards a younger wide receiver. Tate is gone, in my opinion. I'd be surprised if he's back. Evan Ingram, I think they keep, unless they trade him. But I don't think that's going to happen. I think they're going to keep him for at least one more year. Whether or not he gets a contract extension after that or whether or not he finishes the season with the Giants next year is another discussion. But I think he definitely starts the season with the New York Giants in 2021. The Giants seem to like him, um, and he's still pretty affordable with that rookie deal. So I think Ingram will be back. I think Tate will be gone. Tate's older. He makes a lot of money. It makes sense from a financial standpoint to let him go. So there's your answer there. Um, Ryan Clay, I don't know why it hasn't popped up on here yet, but I'll answer you here. He says, what's up, Chris? Everyone smash that like button. Ryan Clay is a great supporter of mine. He's always in my Discord. By the way, if anybody wants to join my Discord, um, please do so. Sorry about that. I just refreshed it. You lost me for a second. Sorry about that. I just refreshed it because my chat was frozen. It still is. So I'm not going to be able to pull up your chats for some reason on here. Um, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just refer to here. Uh, so your donations and your comments won't come up here, but I'll, I'll refer to here. I'll look right. Karan Gill says Googs was hired as an offensive line consultant last week. He already began with the COVID test and Columbo's reaction to working next to him is what led to this dismissal. Yeah, that's what, that's what somebody said earlier and makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense. Obviously he's not buying in. He did the same thing with the players. If you're not buying in with what the head coach wants to do, you're out of here. He's trying to build a culture. If you're not buying in, you're done. And that's exactly what it seems like happening with Mark Colombo. Uh, let's see what we got here. Timmy, man. Timmy, man. Thank you so much, man. Timmy, I got to give Timmy a wrench, by the way. I've been meaning to do this. I keep forgetting to do it. He has been, um, he's, he's always in my streams. He's always in my Discord. He's such a great supporter of the channel. I don't chat him out nearly enough. I appreciate that, Timmy. Thank you very much. He says, how do you think McKinney would fit in the defense? Also, do you think this new offensive line coach would have an impact? 
I do. I think he could have an impact. Absolutely. I don't think I don't think Judge would have brought him in if he didn't feel like he was going to have an impact. Um, he's he's got great credentials. You saw what he did with the Colts. They had the best offensive line in the sport when he took over as the offensive line coach. There from they they literally went from like thirty to one or thirty to top three within one year. And obviously they drafted Quentin Nelson, but he definitely deserves some credit for that. So I do think he could definitely have an impact. Um, as far as McKinney goes. Like I said earlier, I think they're going to slowly implement him back into the defense, but I think they'll move him around. I think he'll play some safety. He might take up Julian Love's role, maybe play a little bit of slot, play him up at the line of scrimmage. They're going to move him around. They're going to find ways to give everybody opportunities, though, in terms of playing time. I don't think he's going to be playing every snap. I think I think they'll find a way to get him in there, though. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Will, man, thank you very much, man. Imagine how deadly the read option will be with Jones when we get Saquon back. Will, that's funny you say that because I was on the Hubs channel last night. And that's exactly what I said. If this offensive line continues to progress and Barkley is Barkley, Barkley comes back behind this offensive line with Daniel Jones's wheels. And if you get a weapon on the outside to take away, you know, so they can't stack the box, you have to, you know, you got to respect, you know, a top tier wide receiver. If you're able to do that, I can't even imagine how deadly this read option could be with the New York Giants. Like it's scary how, how dangerous that could be. Daniel Jones is athletic. The guy can move. Um, and you pair that with the Saquon Barkley. That is a scary, scary thing for an opposing defense. Uh, let's see what we got here. Hear me out on this one. A third and golden tape for OBJ. We're not trained for OBJ. Uh, we're not trained for OBJ. Uh, let's see what we got here. Gotta, gotta love that Joe Judge isn't afraid to make changes compared to coaches prior. Karan Gill, I've been saying this all offseason. It's not, it's not even the coaching staff. It's not even necessarily the players on the roster. It's also moves from within season. Like, when you think about this New York Giants team over the previous two, three years, they weren't this proactive, like, in season. Like, think about all the players we've brought in in season. We brought in, like, three running backs. We brought in a couple, you know, one or two wide receivers. We've been active, man. We brought in guys off waivers to try to help this team this year. He's been very active with his decision-making, both on penalizing guys, coaches, and bringing people in to try to support this roster. Uh, Sigma, man, thank you very much, man. Why did they fire Colombo? Will this screw us up? Why did they fire Colombo? Why did they screw this up? I mean, reports have come out that the, the main reason why they fired Colombo, apparently they had hired Coach Googs, and now it's working, by the way. Now it caught up. They hired Coach Googs as an assistant, and Colombo didn't react well to it. Judge felt like he needed more help. He was helping him more in the meetings throughout the last couple of weeks. And because of the way that Colombo responded, they decided to move on. They interviewed Coach Googs this offseason, so Colombo probably saw him as a potential threat. Who do you think the Knicks take in the draft, Charles? I I still think – I I think they're going to take a point guard. I'm going to lean Halliburton if I had to guess. Um, I still think they're taking a point guard. I I would probably prefer the shooting guard uh, from Florida State, v Vassell. I think they're going to take a point guard. Uh, Melinda says, what do you think the Giants will go this season, 5-11? and 11? That's, that's what I have, Matt. Five or six wins, Melina. I'm actually going to do a video on that soon. Um, I was going to do it today. I still might. We'll see. But I'm live streaming the, the NBA draft later tonight. But if not, I'll do it tomorrow. It's not like it's like a pressing, you know, a breaking news. But, I, yeah, I'm going to do a video on that uh, sometime this week where I uh, talk about the, you know, my predictions in terms of what the Eagles are going to do, the Giants are going to do, Washington's going to do, Dallas is going to do in terms of the playoffs. I think six wins, we have an opportunity to make the playoffs, as crazy as that may sound. And I think it's possible. I got us five right now, but I could see six. Sean, man, thank you very much. He says, Think we could sign a pass rusher and draft a wide receiver early. What's the highest you'd pay Leo and Dalvin? Great question, Sean. Um, I've talked about this before the season started, in season. Um, I never wanted to bring back both because I didn't think it made financial sense, and they have depth at that position. However, the way the defense has played, I would understand wanted to bring everybody back for continuity. But what is it going to cost? Leonard Williams having a career year. He's already making 16 or $17 million this year on the franchise tag, something that we didn't think he should be getting, to be honest with you, coming into the year. But he's got five sacks. He's been a you know, he's been a, he's been an impact player. He's been an impact player since he's gotten here. I think he's gonna cost you at least $17 million, $16, $17 million on a three or four year deal. I think that's what it's gonna cost. And if I had to guess, I think they're gonna bring him back. Would I exceed that? No. I'm not I'm not going $20 million a year for Leonard Williams. I'm not doing it. Um but if you could bring him back for 17, I think that's the going rate. I think that's what's what it's gonna cost. Um, Dalvin has expressed that he wants to come back on a discount so or would be willing to come back on a discount. If you could bring him back for 9 or $10 million, I would be interested in potentially bringing back both. Uh, 
as crazy as that may sound. I would be interested in bringing back both. I wouldn't want to break up this defense. The D-line has done a phenomenal job. Um, and as far as a wide receiver in the draft, if we're picking in the right spot, I wouldn't be against Jamar Chase. But we got to be picking in the right spot. Yuri, man, thank you very much, man. People are in the Jamar Chase train. Why not get this teammate, uh, Terrence Marshall, 6'3", 200, uh, total threat? Yuri, I could see them going uh, wide receiver in the second round of this draft, third round of this draft as well, trying to address defense in the first round, cornerback, linebacker, edge. I could see that as well. Um, I'm a corner guy. I've said that now for weeks. I, I'm on the corner train right now with the way that this team looks. That may change at free agency um, as I see this team progress over the next six weeks. But right now, if you ask me, and I, I don't even know where we're picking. You know, we may make the playoffs. But right now, I think our biggest need is a cornerback. Griggs, man, thank you very much, man. Happy to see a live stream on this. Breaks up the uh, monotony. Uh, uh, I'm so bad with pronouncing words. It breaks up your desk job. I appreciate that. Thank you for popping in, man. Hopefully everybody's having a good day at work, wherever you guys are. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for your continued support. Um, and we'll talk more about the, uh, the the changing of the offensive line for anybody that may have just popped in. Nate says, can we get certain if we make the playoffs? What do you feel about signing Galladay and Ngakwe in free agency as well? Um, can we get certain? Probably not. It. You know who I think is going to get certain? I think the Cowboys are going to get certain. I think the Cowboys are going to get a top five pick. And the Cowboys desperately need a corner. If you ask me right now, I, th I think they're going to get them. As far as Galladay and Yannick, um, yeah, I mean, I'd be open to both. They're only going to be able to spend big on one big free agent, especially if they bring some of these guys back. you got to bring back Logan Ryan, too, potentially. Wayne Gallman. They're only going to be able to bring in one guy. And then you're going to have to ask yourself, is it going to be the wide receiver? Is it going to be an edge? I would lean, actually, wide receiver. I'd rather go defense in the draft. That's just my opinion. I'd want to get the established player. Uh, for Daniel Jones to try to help out this team as quickly as possible, whether that be Galladay or whether it be Allen Robinson. But I don't know how it's all going to play out. I don't know what our cap situation is going to be. I don't know who we're bringing back that's on the team already. Um, but, yeah, that's my opinion. John, man, thank you very much. I appreciate it. He says, Cowboys re-signed Smith but not Vander. Do you think we should sign him in the offseason if available? Looks like we will miss out on Parsons if we make the playoffs, or should we draft Dylan Moses? I like Parsons a lot. If we make the playoffs, we're not getting him. Uh, Dylan Moses is a good prospect as well. As far as Van Der Esch goes, I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure Van Der Esch is approaching his rookie rookie option. I, I don't even know the comp, uh, contract implications on Van Der Esch. Let me take a quick look. Um, I, I, I don't think we would sign him. I would be surprised, and I would guess he'd be back with the Cowboys. Sign me, man. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Wide receiver one, Saquon, DJ Slayton, and the line equals failed. We're getting a wide receiver one. Oh, yeah. We're getting a wide receiver one, Simon, it, whether it be in the draft or whether it be in free agency. And the, in my opinion, at least, I think that's our biggest need on offense right now. Um, and, yeah, I think, our, I think our team with this improving offensive line would be deadly. Um, I'm trying to find Leighton Van Der Esch's contract. Let me take a quick look. And we'll get back to the chat. Uh, Giants have one of the best secondaries, and it's only going to get better. Right now, they have, they have a liability at that second cornerback spot, um, and I think they're gonna and I think they're gonna hit home with it. I do. I, I think they're gonna get one, whether it be in free agency or early in next year's draft. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Leighton Vanderesh asked me about. I don't like to talk about things I don't know about. He was. Uh, he's on the contract. Leighton Van Leighton Vanderesh on the contract, 2021. He's a um, and then they have the rookie option in 2022. So he's still on the contract with the Cowboys. They have him for another year. They have him for another year. If we get a top 15 pick for Saquon, would you trade him? No, not November. <laughs> I didn't know what the NNN was. Okay, that yes, that would give me a no, not November. No doubt about it. Um, 1,000 people watching you at 1 p.m. Wow, that's great. Love the stream, Rayo, man. I really appreciate that. I got my Mets hat on because I couldn't find the uh, Knicks hat before I went live. Um, and it's so tight on my head. Jake, man, thank you very much, man. I appreciate it, man. He says, hey, Dana, always on top of every breaking story and the best sports streamer out there. I look at Justin Ross as as, the, as this year's Metcalf, two to three round drop. Jake, me personally, I would love to get a wide receiver in, the, in, the, in that area, the two to three round range if we don't bring in one in free agency. I would rather go defense in the first round. That's where my head is. My, that's where my head's at right now. Um, let's see what we got here. The entertainment dog and OnlyFans Cheesewood says, what's up, Cheesewoods, man? Watching at work. Glenn, don't tell anybody. Don't tell them you're at work. You get fired. I can't have that. You're one of my best subs, man. Thank you for being here, buddy. Um, and Alex, man, I really appreciate that, man. Thank you for the $2 donation, man. 
Um, and there's the Discord link, by the way. You guys always ask about the Discord. Bigger Mike just posted it there. I can't put it up here because it's lagging. A lot of you guys joined. I posted it on Twitter the other day. Um, go over there. We'll talk New York Giants. I'm in there all the time. So go over there. Check it out. Malik. I love Malik, man. What's up, Malik, man? How you been, Malik? He says, hey, Chris, what's up? We need to get my man edge rusher from my – you want Greg Rousseau? Uh, that's the most important then second round receiver or corner, but the first pick, my man from Miami. Truth. Um, uh, you, you, you know what, Malik? You did want Chase Claypool. I'm going to give you credit for that. I'm going to give you credit for that. And a lot of Giants fans are going to want Greg Rousseau. And it's, again, it's going to be uh, depend on where we're picking, though, Malik. We may make the playoffs. We make the playoffs, Rousseau's out of the equation. So we'll see. What's going on, D. Coop, man? Thanks for popping in the stream, man. Um, Colombo is fired. Yeah, let's talk a little bit more about Colombo because that's what this stream is about. I talked a lot about him um, at the beginning. I don't want to get too far away from that. Um, I think it was the right – well, if what is being reported is factual, I think it was the right move. If he's giving the head coach a hard time, if Judge had to pay more attention to him, and if he said, I got to bring in Coach Googs to be the assistant to help this guy out, and Colombo didn't respond well, goodbye. I mean, Coach Googs is a very accomplished offensive line coach. I don't think this is anything that anybody should panic about. Um, when I first heard the news, I was in shock because of the improvement of the offensive line. But then you hear the details start to slowly come out, and you understand why the Giants made the move. I don't think this is going to be any bump in the road. He's got ties to Judge. Judge is a very well-thought-out guy. My guess is this is probably the guy that Judge wanted to hire from the beginning. They brought him in for an interview. He coached with Judge at 14 and 15. He coached with Flores last year in 19. To no surprise, he brought in the, our quarterback coaches from Miami last year and our defensive coordinator, both from Miami last year. I think this was probably Judge's guy from the beginning, but Colombo has ties to Garrett, the offensive coordinator. So I think that was probably the main reason why we brought Colombo in. And my guess is Judge didn't like the job he was doing, and that's why he moved on and he brought in his guy. That's that's my guess. Uh, Yuri, man, thank you very much, man. Which six Giants would vote? Which six Giants would you vote for in this year's Pro Bowl? Well, you start with Graham Gano. Graham Gano has to be a pro bowler. He's perfect. Um, I, Leonard Williams would probably be one of the six if I had to vote for six. Martinez, Bradbury, those four for sure. Probably Riley Dixon. I don't know the punter stats, but he's, he did great last game. Uh, probably Riley Dixon. And if I had to pick a sixth, uh, Peppers has been hurt this year, so I don't think I could pick him. He hasn't played a full season. Um, nobody on the – I mean, Slayton's not good enough. Uh, Trying to think who else it could be. I mean, I don't think anybody in the offense deserves a play uh, Pro Bowl nod. It'd have to be somebody else on the defense. Uh, maybe Lawrence. Maybe Dexter Lawrence. Andrew, man, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Can't wait to tame those Cincinnati kittens after this bye week. Andrew, I think I think we're going to beat the Cincinnati kittens. I think we're going to beat the Cincinnati kittens. I think you give Patrick Graham an extra week to prepare. Patrick Graham is one of the smartest guys. Patrick Graham is one of the smartest guys in football. This guy's brilliant. You give him an extra week to prepare against this team, he's going to dial up something nice about against that rookie quarterback. Uh, Malik, man, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I'm the best scout. I told everyone that Chase Claypool may be a future Hall of Famer. But anyways, whatever first pick we have, make sure it's a uh, it's a pass rusher. And I will watch more from Notre Dame. Malik, I will, Malik I'm a, I, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reach out to the Giants, and I'm going to try to get you a scouting job. Um, but you're, 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 you're big. You were a big Chase Claypool guy out of Notre Dame. Notre Dame's got a lot of good prospects this year on the defensive end. Actually, they got a really good defensive line. They got a really good linebacker. Um, they got a really good front seven. I'm a Notre Dame fan. Um, Isaiah says, should we tank? Should we tank? Did you just ask that? Did you just ask that Isaiah? You, yeah, I laughed. We had Giants fans saying we should tank a week into the season. I had people in my streams commenting. Tank for Trevor a week into the season. Two weeks into the season. That happened. That happened. I want you to I want you guys to remember that at the end of the day. That happened. That actually happened. That yeah, that happened. Yeah. Um, let's see what we got here. Hi, Chris. I'm your Stan. What's going on? Entertainer talking drugs, man. Thanks for popping in the stream, my man. Um do you think the, those rumors are true about Judge and Colombo getting – no, those rumors are completely false, Green Eyes. They were disproven. Did not happen. Did not happen. Uh, that is complete fake information. Did not happen, uh, Green Eyes. Fake information. Um, let's see what we got here. What's going on there, Mikey Nixon? Man, thanks for popping the stream. What's going on, Nick Young? Uh, Mikey, too nice. He says, what do you think about uh, 
Uh, I like Sertain, uh, Mikey. Too nice. I like Sertain. Haven't done a ton of research on him, but I, but from what I've seen, I like him. I'm going to do a lot more research on the draft as it becomes more appropriate. Right now, I'm focused on the season. Um, Alex, man, thank you very much, man. Carton and Roberts said trade Saquon. Wayne, great thought. Okay, here's my thoughts on that, man. It's easy to say trade Saquon. What are you going to get from him? Like, what team is going to say, oh, yeah, 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 I'm going to give you a first-round pick for a guy that is coming up an ACL injury. Pick me, pick me. Yeah, I mean, it's easy to say that. But who's who's going to give you the price tag that you would want? You're not going to trade Saquon for a second-round pick. You're not doing that. Um, so I just don't I, – I don't see it happening. I, I don't see it happening. Now's not the time to do it. Peter, man, thank you very much, man. I appreciate it, man. He says, if we're beating the Bengals, then we have to be predicting six wins. I think we beat the Bengals and Cowboys and surprise one of the four tough games. Yeah, Pete, I mean, listen, I don't I um I I don't want to even think like go go crazy about thinking about the playoffs until we beat the Bengals. If we beat the Bengals, which I'm picking, but we didn't do it yet. If we beat the Bengals, I will start to think about playoffs. And at that point. I would probably be leaning six wins. You'd be coming off three in a row. You'd have a game in, that we should be winning against Dallas the last week of the year. And you'd have four games in which I think it's realistic to think we could win at least one. But let's beat the Bengals first, and then we worry about it. One week at a time, beat the Bengals. Get your third win in a row. Get your first win out of the division. Continue to build confidence. And then let's see if we can pick up one of these other teams. But one week at a time. Beat the Bengals before we even start thinking playoffs. Beat the Bengals. Um, let's see what we got here. Pete Parker says, I just got on here. What the blank happened, Chris? Pete, New York Giants moved on from their offensive line coach, Mark Colombo. Um, and supposedly what happened was Coach Googs was brought in as an assistant a week ago. We didn't hear about it, I guess, because of the COVID testing. At least that's what a couple of my subscribers said. Um, but they brought him in a week ago and Colombo did not respond well to it. Uh, also what came out was Joe Judge felt like he was spending way too much time trying to coach up the offensive line. Judge, of course, is more of a CEO guy. He wants his coaches to do their job, and he felt like he was putting in too much effort to coaching out the offensive line. Decided to move on from Colombo. As far as Guglielmo goes, he's a very accomplished offensive line coach. He coached with the Giants from 04 to 08 as an assistant. You remember we had the best offensive line in football in 08. Coach for the Jets. Coach for the Colts in 18 when they flipped from the worst offensive line to the best. Coach with Miami last year with Flores, where we got a lot of our coaches. And now he's with the Giants. We interviewed him in the offseason. Alex, thank you very much, man. Package a package Saquon and Evan. If you had to, how would you build it? It's not gonna happen. I, I mean, we could do a fantasy trade, but it's not gonna happen. We're not trading Saquon Barkley, not right now. Um, but if we were to trade Saquon and Evan Ingram, I mean, I'm getting a, a I don't know, first and a third. Uh, I guess I, I don't know, but we're not we're not trading Saquon Barkley. We're not doing it. We're not doing it. Uh, not now. I'm not saying it won't ever happen, but not now. Uh, what's going on, Nikki? Thanks for popping in the stream, my man. What's going on, Isaiah Wilson? Lose my name, bro. I don't know what you mean by that. Uh, Tomlinson, what's going on, man? Thanks for popping in the stream, buddy. Would you rather Galladay or Robinson? I'm leaning Galladay, but I like both. You got it, Pete, man. Thanks for being here, buddy. Uh, for third uh, third round pick, because that's all you'll get. Ingram's contract is up, isn't it? Yeah, he's got, well, he's got one more year, Ryan. They extended him. They extended him on the rookie option before the year started. So they're actually paying Ingram, I think, $7 million or thereabouts next year. So he's got one more year on the contract. They extended him on the fifth year of the rookie extension. Uh, let's see what we got here. Who else is a Browns fan this week? I think everybody is. Of course, by the way, I'm on Twitter today. And what happens? Conklin, he's out due to COVID for the Browns. The week they're playing the Eagles. Might be the most important player on that offense. Conklin's out. Great. Great news. Great news. He couldn't have waited a week. He's got to do it again. He couldn't wait until they played us. Couldn't have waited until we played us in a couple of weeks. He decided to do it when they played the Eagles. Um, let's see what we got here. Chris, when's the next fishing trip at the Hudson? Uh, Ryan, tonight. We'll go fishing tonight, Ryan. We'll go fishing tonight during the NBA draft. Um, is he an old lineman? Yeah. Conklin, yeah. He's one of, he might be might be the best right tackle in football. Uh, Ed Dana, who do you think the Giants should draft in 2021 draft? Should we draft? Um, I don't know where we're picking yet. I don't know where we're picking yet. Corner, wide receiver. That's what I want right now, as of now. Corner, wide receiver. One of those two. Um, Dan, that sucks, man. Still going for the Browns. Yeah, of course we're going for the Browns, man. 
How do you feel about Darnay Holmes? I like Darnay Holmes. Um, I like Darnay Holmes. He's a rookie, though. He's He struggles at times. He struggled a bit last game. I still like him. Um, I think he's going to be a good player. Smart player. Seems to be a hard worker. At times, he's really been good. Um, and at times, he hasn't been. He was actually pretty bad last week, I thought, in the slot. But I still like Darnay Holmes. I think he's going to be a good player. Um, Nick's, yeah, Nick's better make the right move is right, man. You should be in the new Godfather movie. Are they making a new Godfather movie? If they are, I'd love to. I'd love to get. I'd love to get a role in the new Godfather movie. Um, th these are old, but Daniel says, "Hey, Tana, if the Giants end up middle, of the oh, I already answered that question. Uh, that's not true, Kapil. A lot of people have said that, Kapil. That is fake news. That is not true. Did not get into a fist fight. That is completely false." Who do you think we can't we can't resign next year? I think we could resign all the players. I'm not saying we will, Joe, but I think we're I think we're gonna be fully equipped to bring back anybody that we want. Um, based on some of the cuts that I think we'll make. Uh Stefano, man, thank you very much, man. Online Big Blue Entertainment made a video of Joe Judge being considered for coach of the year. If we go six to ten and make the playoffs, your thoughts. That's funny because he was bashing Joe Judge like two weeks ago. But as far as my thoughts on Joe Judge, coach of the year at six and ten, I'm gonna say no. And I love Joe Judge. And I think Joe Judge is going to be one of the best coaches in football. Um, and I've thought that from the beginning of the year. I think in the, I think down the line, he's going to be one of the best coaches in football. But this year, I don't know how you give it to anybody else than Flores. Flores coach of the year right now. And to me, it's not even close. Miami 6-3. and three. Miami. Miami 6-3. and three. Flores is coach of the year right now, in my opinion. Um, X-Man, thank you very much, man. I appreciate it. He says, Giants will be competing in these next six games and will win at least three. Lawrence Taylor, it's going to go, uh, we're going to go down like a bunch of crazed dogs. They're going to fight all the way, man. And that that's when I, I had a ton of respect for the New York Giants um, when, they start, when they fought, man. Because they had every reason to give up several times. They had every reason to give up several times uh, this year. They got embarrassed against the 49ers. They came out, they fought the next week. They got the they 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 blew a gigantic lead against the Eagles. They came back. They fought the next week. You know when when they when they squandered that league. The te the team continues to fight. And one thing you know about this team, they're going to come out prepared and they're going to give you everything they got. And as a Giants fan, it makes me proud. And that's all you can ask for this year if you're a Giants fan. Damn man, thank you very much, man. I think Mark wasn't using players' strengths like trying to change Andrew Thomas's technique, which led to him struggling. Judge clearly stated he wanted to use players for their strength, and Mark simply wasn't. At the end of the day, I think that has a lot to do with it, Damon. I, I think that Andrew Thomas' struggles, Judge probably felt like Colombo was not helping improve it. Um, and, and and the timeline adds up. Because what you heard coming out from Garofalo was that Judge had been paying extra attention to the offensive line over the over the last couple of weeks. That's his investment. That's his baby. That's his first round pick. If he doesn't feel like he's being coached properly, that's probably why he made the change. Ryan, man, thank you very much. Uh, Garoppolo tweeted saying Colombo let it out verbally. I'm sure he did. Colombo is a very emotional guy. He's a rah-rah guy. The players have said on his former team and on the New York Giants, he it's almost like he's one of the players. So I am not surprised if Colombo exploded at all, uh, Ryan. John, man, thank you very much. If you had a choice between Juju Galladay and Allen Robinson, who? I'm leaning Galladay. I'm, I'm leaning Galladay. Uh, Robinson would be a very close second. I don't want Juju. Galladay won. Robinson, a very close second. I don't want Juju. Uh, let's see what we got here. Nate. Uh, what's up, Nate? Sorry I missed most of the stream. What did I miss? Well, obviously, Nate, you know Mark Colombo, who you love, uh, is gone. I'm assuming you know that. Mark Colombo's gone. No longer the offensive line coach for the New York Giants. That's pretty big news. And Coach Googs is the new offensive line coach who coached for the Giants from 04 to 08. Was the Colts offensive line coach in 2018 uh, when they – jumped from worst to first in terms of offensive line rankings. He coached with Miami last year with Flores, who we took a lot of their coaches from. Uh, what's going on there, Watch Medicine? Thanks for popping in the stream, man. He says, Judge and Colombo entered the octagon. Judge came out. That's what it seems like. Chris, you watching my first YouTube video? It's out. Uh, Casper, I will try my best. Do me a favor. Post it in the comments below. I'm subscribed to so many Giants content creators. After the stream, go back in, post your video, and I'll definitely check it out, uh, Casper. Or if you follow me on Twitter. L. Ray De Niro says, this is what I wanted, a new online coach. We needed it, man. Uh, let's see we got here. Chris Leone says, Chris, if the Giants make the playoffs, can I get my wrench back? Chris Leone, if the Giants, yes, you got a deal. Chris Leone, if the Giants make the playoffs, you get a wrench back. Alvaro says, have you heard of Ron uh, Rondell Moore? Why was he out of 
I I think a couple of my subscribers have brought him up to me, Alvaro. I don't know much about him, though. A couple of my subscribers have brought him up to me, though. Malik says, thanks, Chris. It's it's laughed at every time. Who didn't think we should draft a receiver that early? I, lo I love our safety, but we should have traded up. Man, yo, I still love him. We, we, Malik, come on. Not, none of this. None of this. Malik, man, I know you love Claypool. We're going to get a wide receiver this year that you love, though. I promise you. But thank you very much, buddy. I appreciate it. My man, Authentic, is on the is in the stream, man. And my chat is frozen. Otherwise, I'd pull your comment up. But if you guys have not done so, go on over to Authentic. Always like to show that guy some love. He's got a great channel. He says, Tate is on the grind. Hope I'm not too late. No, you're not too late. We're going to go. I don't know when I went live. It's 150. I started at 1. I'll probably go for another 20 minutes, 30 minutes. I'm not going to make it too long, but I wanted to talk about it with you guys. I know it's a huge news story right now. Um, Jackie says, sup, Chris. Thoughts on making the playoffs or losing more games to get a higher draft pick? Any chance we win one playoff game if we make it? Yes, I think there is a chance. Um, I No, I want to win. I want to make the playoffs. I want to make the playoffs. I definitely don't want to lose. I want to make the playoffs. Um, I don't care about a draft pick. I want to make the playoffs. I, I think that that would be a uh, growing experience for this team learning how to win, learning how to play in competitive football games down the stretch. I think the experience would be very good for this football team. I want to make the playoffs if you can. In terms of making the playoffs, sure, we could win a game. Why not? I mean, we'd have, we'd have a home game. We'd be going up against teams that, we, you know, we're going up, we're, we'd be going up against a team like the Rams, who we've already played, maybe the Bears, um, the Bucks, who we played down to the wire. Why couldn't we compete and potentially win one of those games? We've shown that we, we could go up against really good teams and, and give them a fight. I'm not saying we go on a Super Bowl run where we wouldn't, but could we win one playoff game? Yeah. I wouldn't favor us, but could we? Yeah. Uh, let's see what we got here. Chris, who should we sign during the offseason? Let's get there first, Swifty. There's a lot of names. There's a lot of names. Let's get there first. We still got six games in season. I want to focus in season before we get to off season. We've got a lot of big games coming up, um, and this team we need to mature and get better. Uh, you know, but we know the needs, wide receiver, cornerback, edge, coverage linebacker. Uh, and I appreciate that harsh, man. Thanks for popping on the stream, man. Hey, Chris, how are you, man? What's going on, Chris? Glad to, glad to see Chris Lavelle in here, man. What's going on, buddy? Love the hat. Let's go Mets, baby. Do you think the Dolphins have a good chance to go 9-3 and three entering the next three games? I saw their schedule, and I would say yes. As a matter of fact, I'd be surprised if they didn't. The Jets would lose to Hofstra. They don't even have a football team. I say that all the time. Um, and as far as the other teams go, Denver sucks. And Cincinnati sucks. Yes, they I, at worst eight and four. Pete says hashtag playoff uh, bound. How do I become a member or wrench? Um, well, the wrench I give out. I get. I give. I only give out like one a stream because it got way out of control. Um, but I, you know, you keep showing up the streams. That's how you get a wrench. As far as a member goes, um, what should we call it? It's uh, if you're on the channel, you hit the join button, and then there's a um, option. By the way, any member, I'm gonna be doing a member stream. I'm hoping. In like four or five days. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. I'm going to be doing a membership probably like Monday, Tuesday of next week. Because I know I owe you guys another one. So I'm going to be doing another one of those soon. Swanee, man. Thanks, uh, thank you so much. Football is a cutthroat business. This move should let players and coaches know JJ is not here to play games. You mess up. You are gone. And he's been that way with the players. And now he's been that way with the coaches. He doesn't take nonsense. And that's what the book was on Judge when he took this job. So I'm happy, man. Uh, let's see what we got here. It was great talking to you on the Hub stream last night. Yeah, Chris, man. Oh, yeah, that was you, Chris. That's awesome, man. Yeah, you did a great job, man. You did a great job. You can tell you're a very well-informed New York Giants fan. I had fun talking to you as well, man. Thank you for being here, buddy. Um, I would become a member, man, but I are you kidding me, Cole? Nobody – don't ever feel forced to do that, man. I appreciate you guys being here, supporting the channel, watching the videos. Um, that's – it blows me away, uh, all the support you guys always show me. Gungo, man. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it, man. He says, I watched your stream since week two last year, and I don't regret it one bit. I listen to your play-by-play -play instead of the commentators. Keep it up. I really appreciate that, man. I'll give you a quick play-by-play -play real quick. Here comes Daniel Jones coming out in the shotgun formation. Man in motion left to right is Evan Ingram. Looks like the uh, Bengals are showing blitz. Jones changes the play at the line of scrimmage. Takes the snap, drops, pops, looking, cooking, looks left, comes back right, throws one deep down the right sideline. Caught, Golden Tate. 30 yards, out of bounds. First down, New York Giants. Crimson, man, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it. Stand up, new member. Welcome to the channel, Crimson, man. I really appreciate it, buddy. Um, uh, Josh, you says, Joe Judge was the best coach hire in a decade. Joe Judge has been phenomenal. Joe Judge has been absolutely fantastic. Um, and I think he's, and I think it's only going to get better. 
I think he's I think he's the full time. I think he's full time. Rose Carr says, just remember that that a like of the stream is just as important for streamers. Yeah, yeah, Ross, absolutely, man. Hit the thumbs up. Subscribe, ring the bell. You get notifications every time I go live. If anybody's a hoops fan or you just want to have some fun tonight, maybe you want to get back into basketball. Um, it's actually a huge night for the New York Knicks. They got two draft picks in the first 23. They're picking eight and 23. I don't do a ton of Knicks content. I'm going to try to do more uh, for all the New York Knicks fans, but I'm going to be streaming the uh, draft tonight. Anybody interested? Um, I'll be doing the first round. I don't think I'm going to do the second round. I'll be doing the first round Um, because the Knicks now don't have a second round pick. Uh, Malik, man, thank you very much, man. I got in my feels when the Steelers took him from us. But, yeah, I don't mind them signing someone or drafting someone because really, my man, from Alabama, but he broke his foot. Uh, but look look for him later. You're talking about the wide receiver from Al Alabama's got a ton of really good wide receivers, uh, Malik. And, listen, Chase Claypool has been phenomenal, but we'll find another receiver. I like Claypool a lot, though. I actually drafted him in my keeper league in fantasy football um, in the last round because you get to keep them based on the round that you draft them. I'm very happy I did. I drafted him in the 18th round. So I'll be able to keep Chase Claypool in the 18th round over the next two years. So I was with you, Malik. I liked him. I think he's going to get a bigger role because I think they're going to move on from Juju. What's going on? It's Sanya Legs popping in the stream, man. Will Fackrell come back? Yeah, I, yeah, I think I – well, I don't know. I haven't heard much of Fackrell, but I think he'll be back in two weeks. I haven't – it didn't I, – I think. I don't know. Ian, man, thank you very much. I appreciate it. He says, can we resign Williams and Tomlinson next year? Yes. We absolutely have the option to – um to, to sign both. I think we're going to have enough cap space after we make some changes to sign both. I don't know if we will, but we will have the option to do so. Um, Tana, I want to know what Garrett thinks about the Colombo situation. What does he think? That I don't know. I think it was a Garrett-influenced hire, but I'm sure um, that Judge talked to Garrett before he made this move. Garrett's the offensive coordinator. I'm sure that he talked to him before he made this move. Um, in terms of the reason why they fired him, I see a couple of people asking this. Uh, I'll continue to explain it. Uh, I'm going to be live for about another 15 minutes. Here's the reason, supposedly, why they fired him. Okay, let's go over the hiring process of Colombo first. I think he was a Joe Judge influenced hire. Uh, not, I, um, I'm sorry, Jason Garrett influenced hire. Jason Garrett coached with Colombo well at Dallas. He was the offensive line coach there. Garrett, to me, was more of a Mara hire, um, or maybe even a Gettleman hire than a Judge hire. He had no, he had no attachments to Garrett. Um, so I think Garrett had a lot to do with why Colombo came here. By all accounts, over the last two or three weeks, Judge had to pay a lot more attention to the offensive line. We all know that Andrew Thomas was struggling mightily over the first four or five weeks. And supposedly what's come out now is Joe Judge spent a lot of attention on the offensive line in practices. We all know that Judge wants to be a CEO. He doesn't want to be a guy that's a positional coach. And he probably felt like Colombo was holding the team back. In terms of the guy that they brought in, Coach Googs is a very accomplished offensive line coach. He has ties to Judge. He coached with the Patriots for two years at 14 and 15. He coached with Flores last year with the Dolphins, and he was credited with the resurgence of the Colts' offensive line after they drafted Quentin Nelson in 2018. He also was an assistant offensive line coach with the Giants from 2004 to 2008 when we won a Super Bowl, and we had the best offensive line in the sport. John, man, thank you very much. I appreciate it. The Cavs and Knicks have discussed trading the number five pick for eight and 23, but the Cavs are holding out for more. Are the Knicks real? Wow. I don't know if I like that. I don't know if I like that. If the Knicks are going to trade up, I want to get in the top three. Uh, Malik, thank you very much, man. But the funny part, we can get him in four years in free agency because still really never wants to sign. Yeah, he'll probably become a, uh, he'll probably become a free agent wide receiver, if I had to guess. The Steelers let everybody go. Chris, should we keep Freeman? Joseph says, I'm going to say no, and I like Freeman. But you can only pay so many running backs, and that's a position that you could draft later in the draft. You could get a guy in the fourth, the fifth, the sixth round. Um, I do. I am leaning to keep Gallman, though. I think Gallman is a good compliment to Barkley. But you can only pay so many running backs. Nick, man, thank you very much, man. Hey, Chris, I am thinking about creating a New York sports podcast. Would love to get in touch with you and talk about it and the whole experience. Nick, 1,000%, man. I don't know if you follow me on Twitter. If you have a Twitter account, uh, message me on Twitter. Um, and if I don't follow you, I guess at me on Twitter so I can, and then you can message me. I try to go on Instagram as much as I can. I'm much more active on Twitter. You can message me on Instagram if you have an Instagram. Um, and I'm sure if some of my uh, my uh, mods, if they could drop those links for people, if they want to follow me on those on Twitter and Instagram, you can. You can message me there. And I'd always talk, you know, give you advice and everything else. Absolutely. And I'd come on your podcast if you wanted. Uh, Lou, man, thank you very much, man. I appreciate it. He says, Colombo didn't agree with rotating the old lineman. I'm not surprised. I mean, that is definitely unconventional. But I'm going to tell you what, Lou, it's been working. And if you're, and if you're not going to buy into what Judge wants, 
you're not you're not going to work here, whether you're a player, whether you're a coach. Um, what time does your live start tonight? Authentic. I think the guys, let me know in the chat. What time does the NBA draft start? I think it starts at seven, but guys, let me know. I could be wrong on that. Let me know what time the NBA draft starts. Uh, and I'll probably go live like 10 minutes before the start of the NBA draft, but let me know what time it starts. It starts at eight. Okay. It starts at eight. Okay. So I'll go live at like seven 50. I'll go live at like seven 50. Gary, I'm thank you very much. I appreciate it. He says, Hey Chris, let's talk, uh, about our next game. That's more important than Colombo, As far as I'm uh, concerned, stand up, New York Giant fans. Gary, okay, it's at 8, so I'll be live at like 7, uh, 7.50. But as far as um, somebody said 7.30, I'll, t- I'll take a look before. I'll figure it out. But as far as um, next week's game, I think we're going to win. I think we're going to win. I think we have a better coaching staff. We have an extra week to prepare. You've got a rookie quarterback going up against a very good defense. The way that Patrick Graham has coached this defense, they're very good. They've generated pressure. They've created turnovers. I think it spells disaster for Burrow. Burrow has 12 touchdowns this year. Six of them came against the Browns. In the other seven games combined, he only has six touchdowns. In the other six games combined. And some people say, well, the Cleveland Browns don't have a bad defense. When you really think about it, the Cleveland Browns have a very bad defense. They have the best rushing attack in football, which supports that defense more so than any other defense. They run the hell out of the football, yet they've surrendered 18 touchdown passes. So he beat up on a very bad passing defense. And outside of that, he's been okay. He's got a lot of yards because they're playing catch up every week. But I don't think Burrow's this guy that scares me. I think with the extra week to prepare, the, the Giants should come out with a good game plan. And I expect us to win the football game. I really do. GBB, thank you very much, man. Hurt Columbo last out on the sideline versus Philly. So I guess more and more details are coming out. But like I said, I'm sure there is a reason, a lot of reasonable explanations for why the New York Giants did it. And I think it only makes sense that they did it during the bye. I think this was calculated by Judge. I think he, I, he knew exactly what he was doing. This was not a rash decision. He knew what he was doing, and that's what he did. Jared, man, thank you very much, man. I want to make stand up. My alarm in the morning. Hearing that is a great way to start the day. Jared, do you know many people? Okay, some people are saying seven. Bing, I'm gonna I'm gonna look into it. Seven thirty. I'm gonna look into it. So whatever time it starts, I'm gonna be live ten minutes before. So I promise you that. But as far as um the stand up thing, do you know how many people have told me their wives or girlfriends hate me before that? Because every time they're they're, they're watching a the giant game, they'll hear me scream that and it's stuck in their heads. You know many you know how many guys have told me their wives or girlfriends hate me? They hate the sound of that my voice. <laughs> what's going on there man thanks for popping in the stream man uh obi Ta- yeah we'll see joe black we'll see what's going on afghanistan man thanks for popping in the stream man what's up daniel q thanks for being here buddy um what's going on there bigger mike what's going on john what's going on sugar tots sugar tots is awesome man thanks for popping in buddy uh nick's better yeah the nick's better pick well is right what's up henny god man thanks for being here buddy um according to espn the draft starts at 7 30 p.m okay lax then i'll be live at 7 20 then i'll be live at 7 20 What's up, Dre Mac? Thanks for popping in the stream, my man. He says, sorry I'm late, Chris, but what's up, just uh, uh, Jayton Toper, man? I don't ever apologize for being late, man. I figured I'd go live for about an hour and a half. We'll go live for 20 more minutes. I figured I'd go live for a little bit midday. You don't do this often, and there was big news uh, that happened with the New York uh, Giants today. Rather than make a quick video, have some fun with you guys. I know you guys always love the live streams, whether it's asking me questions or talking amongst each other. So uh, hopefully you guys are having fun, and hopefully you guys are behind the move and you're not panicking. Meat, man. What's up, Meat? He says, yo, Tana, what up, bro? Great stream. Stand up. I just caused three breakups and two divorces. Every time I do that, uh, wives and girlfriends get pissed. So I, I, if you just broke up with your girlfriend, I apologize. But I got I to gotta do it. It's my thing, guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But thank you guys for being here. I appreciate it, man. Uh, what's going on there, Joseph Cuban? Thanks for popping in the stream, man. He says, are we out of the division race um, if we lose to Cincy? Yes. Since since he is a must win, we absolutely have to win the Cincy game. What's going on, Justin? Man, thanks for popping the stream. What's up, Swag Waffles? What's going on, MYG10? What's going on, Alternator Man? Thanks for popping the stream. What's up, Alex? What's going on, Jug? Thanks for popping the stream. What's going on? Should we re-sign Logan Ryan? Yes, I think Logan Ryan is a must. Logan Ryan to me is a leader of this football team. He's done a phenomenal job. Logan Ryan is a must sign. They got to bring him back. Got to bring him back. It's a no doubter. You got to bring him back. Uh, the end of the day, talking about what's up, Klein? What's going on, Kalen, man? Thanks for popping the stream. Kenji in the house. He says, Columbo, Kenji, by the way, I always like to shout him out. Uh, great supporter of mine. Always drops slow in comments. He says, Columbo was fired in season with Dallas, and he played for them. Again, Columbo was fired in season, so that should be telling 
that he is still learning how to be a coach and it just didn't work out. He was also hired in season. He was the only guy that was hired in season by Jason Garrett while he was a head coach with Dallas. He was the assistant online coach. He promoted him in season. He fired the online coach. Um, listen, all the details that have come out, it makes sense why the New York Giants fired him. We know that Andrew Thomas was struggling, and it seems like when he started to get better, Joe Judge had to you know, put a lot more emphasis on the O-line of practice, and Judge probably felt like Colombo was holding him back. I think that's what happened at the end of the day. G DJ Smooth, thank you very much, man. Joe, Joe Judge going to win us a Super Bowl? I sure hope so, man. I sure hope so. I definitely think we're going to be a competitive football team for a long time with Joe Judge. I'll tell you that. The host, thank you very much. Hey, Chris, do you think the Giants are in the same position as the Dolphins as of last year? Host, I don't know if you watch my channel. That's the funniest thing to me. I don't know if you watch my channel, and it made me feel good because I'm like, oh, wow, the guys on ESPN getting paid said the same thing I did. After week three, go back and watch my video. After week three, I think it's titled like Reasons to be Optimistic. After we got blown out by the San Francisco 49ers, I talked about how we're in an identical situation to the Miami Dolphins. It's exactly what I said. And then last week, Colin Coward came out and said the same exact thing. I, yeah, it's obvious. It's common sense. You look at our dynamic compared to theirs. Both young, inexperienced head coaches coming over from the New England Patriots. Both teams with young rosters with uh, limited expectations going into the year. They've got a new coaching staff. Everything was brand new, and it was a team that you knew was going to struggle coming out of the gate and was going to play better over the second half of the season, and it would translate into next year. I think we're on a very similar timeline to the Miami Dolphins. I think it's nearly identical. Identical. And I think the Giants are going to be a very good team next year. Um, let's see what we got. Juicy, what's going on, my man? Thanks for popping the stream. Weird waking up to a coach firing and not being a Browns fan. Makes sense, though. Judge is looking better every week. He deserves all the money. Listen, man, Juicy, at the end of the day, Juicy, at the end of the day, I'm going to believe in Joe Judge. Everything Joe Judge has done so far, I think, is for the most part, has worked. I'm going to believe in his assessment. He's, he's brought in a great coaching staff. And I always thought from the start, even though I really like the Colombo hire, I always thought from the start it was not a Joe Judge guy. I thought it was more of a Garrett guy. He's bringing in his guy. He doesn't feel like he's doing the job. It is what it is. He's making a grown-up decision. John, man, thank you very much, man. Do you think we will see Benjamin Victory 6-4? We might by year's end, but right now I don't see a reason to do it. Austin Max played well. Um, I don't. Th I, unless there's an injury, I don't see a reason to do it. That We brought in Pettis. I don't see a reason to do it. DJ Smoops says Baker or Wentz, Kirk or Dalton, Smith or Burrow. Okay. Uh, Baker or Wentz? If all things are equal, I'm going Wentz. This year, I go Baker, but this is what I always say. You have to factor in all everything. Baker Mayfield has an unbelievable ground attack. Like, it's the best in the league. He's got a great offensive line. Wentz has no offensive line at all. If they were both on the Browns, I think Carson Wentz would be the better quarterback. So I'm going Carson Wentz. Your second question, Kirk or Dalton? Uh, Kirk. Kirk. Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins was a very good quarterback last year. Kirk Cousins. I'm going Kirk Cousins. And Smith or Burrow? Do you mean Alex Smith? You mean Alex Smith? Burrow. I don't know if that's what you mean. Um, Let's see what we got. I didn't even realize you were live, bro. Yeah, we're, I, po I popped on live for a bit. Man, we had over 1,100 people in here for a bit. Uh, do you think Garrett will sour towards Judge or uh, for firing his guy? No, me. I think this was discussed ahead of time. I don't think he just did this. I think he went to his offense coordinator and said, I'm making I'm making this move. I'm sure it was talked out before he made the move. Uh, Lax, man, thank you very much, man. Love the mid-afternoon live while I work. Do you think they will re-sign both Williams and Tomlinson or let one of them walk? Listen, I'm an ordinary Pete's in the chat, and I always tell him he's not so ordinary. What's going on, Pete? Um, I'm starting to lean that they may, they may sign both. I'm starting to lean that that's possible. Um... And I wouldn't, I wouldn't be upset if they did. I'm not, I don't know if that's what I would do, but I'm starting to lean that that's what they're going to do. I think that this team is not going to want to break this defense up. They perform very well, and I'd understand it. I just hope they're not super long contracts, um, and I hope they don't overpay. But I do think it's possible um, that they do bring back both. I, I do. Um, I don't know if they will, and I think a lot of it's going to come down to if Gettleman's back. If Gettleman's back, Leonard Williams is going to be here. Um, I'm almost positive of that. If Gettleman is not back, well, then that's up, up for interpretation. Uh, can can I get a shout-out? Baruch! What's up, Baruch? Great member of my channel. Glad to see you in here, buddy. T. Savage says, six Eagles fans dislike still buttered over death. It is what it is. T. Savage. You know, what I, you know what I love about the dislike button? One, I don't care. I don't even see it while I'm live. People think, it, you know, maybe it upsets me. I don't even see it while I'm live. But the other thing, 
people don't realize when you hit the dislike button, it helps me more than if you don't hit anything at all. YouTube doesn't care if it's thumbs up or thumbs down. They just want interaction on the channel. So whatever you guys do, I appreciate it. Obviously, I prefer thumbs ups, but it is what it is. Some people just like to thumb down. DJ Smooth, thank you very much. Eagles versus the Browns. Vikings versus the Cowboys. Skins versus the Bengals. Who you got? Oh, I didn't know. Okay. I'm going Browns. You didn't have to super chat that, DJ Smooth. I, I, I didn't know that that's what you meant. I'm going Browns. Um, I'm going Vikings. The Vikings have actually played better as late as of late. The Cowboys suck. And I am well the and I will go Bengals over the skins. I I I think all three of the teams in our division are gonna lose this week. I will go Bengals over Washington. I will go Vikings over the Cowboys, and I will go Browns over the Eagles. I think every team in the NFC East loses this week. Uh, OBJ back to the Giants for cheap, Evan uh, Ridley says. Yeah, we're not getting him back. We're not getting him back. Joe Judge has come out. I, I, I get these like every stream. Do you think we'll bring OBJ back? Do you think we'll trade for OBJ? Because I get it. People love OBJ. You've seen the pattern now with Joe Judge. You saw what he did to Golden Tate. You saw what he just did to a head coach in terms of not buying in. Do you think Odell Beckham is the type of player that Joe Judge would be like, we got to get this guy in? We we got to. We've got to get this guy in. We got to get the guy in that was on the boat trip. We got to get the guy in that was caught on camera with the girl smoke, uh, sniffing cocaine. We've got to get the guy that was humping kicking nets. We got to get the guy that was pissing on the field like a dog. We got to get into the guy. We got to get the guy that got into an embarrassing fight with Josh Norman for everybody to see. We got to do that. That's the guy we got to bring in. Odell Beckham's the guy that's going to improve this culture. Do you think that that is the type of guy that Joe Judge would want to bring in? That is the exact opposite guy that Joe Judge would want to bring to the New York Giants. Dylan, man, thank you very much, man. Reaction to the Hail Mary. The Hail Mary was insane. The Hail Mary was insane, Dylan. I saw it after the fact. I didn't see it live. The host, man, thank you very much, man. In that case, everyone thumbs down. He said he doesn't care. <laughs> host, man, I appreciate it, man. Thank you very much, buddy. Um, I'll take OBJ back. I'm not, I'm I don't see it. I don't I, I don't see it. I don't see that he would bring him back. Um winning is culture. Yeah, winning is a culture. I agree with that. Uh Klein, man, thank you very much, man. I appreciate it. He says. This move really shows how much trust, clout, Joe Judge has earned from ownership. Judge probably couldn't have done this earlier this season. Judge Judge made a big boy move. Judge made a big boy decision today. That's it. Period. End of story. Joe, Joe Judge made a big boy decision today. Um, and uh, if you don't buy into his system, you don't buy into his culture, you're not going to be here. He doesn't care if you're a coach or a player. I love it. Based on what's coming out, I love it. Uh, let's see what we got here. Bring back JPP next season on the cheap and let him retire. John. I wouldn't be against that. JPP's played well. Um, Juicy, man, thank you very much, man. I'd rather sign Des Bryant to play than OBJ. Yeah, I mean, Des Bryant's played in the Garrett offense before, and he'd be very cheap. OBJ's hurt right now, so it does. You know, he wouldn't play. He's out for the year. Um, but I, I, neither one. We're not. Getting, neither one's coming here. Um, the Giants have had so. You know how many times people have talked about Des Bryant coming to the Giants? Not happening. Um, the Giants are trying to bring in younger players. Let's see what we got here. Favorite all time player, Eli Manning. Second all time favorite player, Justin Tuck. Um, yeah. I, I don't go back to the Lawrence Taylor days. I, I Eli Manning, Justin Tuck. Those are my top two. Uh, when will McKinney come back? I think it's going to be this week. Well, two weeks because of the bye. Um, what was the reasoning for the firing, Chris? Just got here. Okay, Mariano. Basically, uh, I'll do it as quickly as I can. Um, basically, what happened was Judge felt like Colombo wasn't doing the job. He was spending a lot more time in the offensive line over the previous two or three weeks. That has come out. Um, and he felt like he wasn't doing the job. And he brought in the guy that I think he wanted all along, a guy that he coached. He, we interviewed him in the offseason. Colombo had ties to Garrett, and I think that's the primary reason why he got the job. He, The, the guy we just brought in, Coach Googs, Coach with Judge with New England at 14 and 15. He coached with Flores last year. Of course, we took a lot of guys from Miami uh, that coached there the previous season. He also was responsible for turning around the Colts' offensive line in 18. And he coached with the Giants for five years from 04 to 08 as an assistant offensive line coach. Um, and, yeah, he wanted a guy. And supposedly, uh, supposedly, and that this isn't factual, but it's what's coming out, um, Colombo was pissed off. With, with, I guess, what Judge was doing in terms of shifting players in and out, in terms of him trying to help him out as a coach. So that's what it seems like happened, and that's why he moved on. Nick, man, thank you very much, man. Odell was good, but he was a diva. We won the trade. 
The Odell trade's in the past. We don't need to talk about it anymore. But we're not bringing him back. We're not bringing him back. It's a, not the type of guy that, um, you know, and some people call me an Odell hater. I'm not trying to be an Odell hater. I try to give you guys my honest opinion. I think we won the trade. Okay? And I don't think he's the type of player that the New York Giants would want back here. DJ Smooth, thank you very much, man. I want T, uh, JJ TJ Watts. I, uh, he, we're not getting him. Why, why, you know, a lot of people have brought up Watt. I think Bad Dog even brought up Watt, if I'm not mistaken. Why in the world would the Pittsburgh Steelers let him go? He's like the best defensive player in football. Why would they let him go? They're not letting him go. They're not getting him. I would love him. We're not getting him. Uh, let's see what we got here. Look what ESPN posted about the Giants' offensive line. Roy, bro, I will take a look after the stream. But I did see the uh, interview by Garoppolo, if that's what you're referring to. And I did watch it. Uh, ESPN just posted a just in, Alex says. Who do you want the Knicks to draft tonight? LaMelo going one. I want a point guard or I, or I want a um, a shooting guard. That's what I want. Um, yeah, I'll talk more about it tonight. I'm going to be doing the stream. But uh, I'm leaning. I would prefer Vassell, the shooting guard out of Florida State. But uh, I think they're going to go point guard. Uh, Halliburton would be my guess. Uh, but they could go with a couple guys. But I think they're going to go point guard. Of course, we're also picking a 23. So we got two picks. Giants should get Watt. Down. Yeah, BB13. I think the Giants, Giants should get Watt. They should get um, they they should get Mahomes. They should also get uh, Aaron Rodgers as a backup. They could use him on trick plays. Um, I think that's what they should do. Uh, let's see what we got here. Funk Ops says, "Will you be doing Nick's play by plays?" Yes, I do. Nick, I, I do Nick play by plays uh, every every year. Um, I didn't do as many as I would have liked this year as the season wore along because I had so much work with the Giants. But I'm going to try to do at least two a week. I did, I did, I did a good amount uh, earlier in the season last year. Um, let's see, what we got here. Do you think, uh, do you think this draft is dry? You talking about the NBA? Uh, it's not a top heavy draft for sure. It's not, it's, it's not a top heavy draft. Not, not as strong as some other classes. Last year's class was much better in terms of being top heavy. DJ Smooth says trade for JJ Watt. They ain't trading JJ Watt. J, I, I mean, I, I would love them. They ain't. They uh, well. I thought you said T.J. Watt because I was still focused on T.J. Watt. J.J. Watt, I, he's been with Houston forever. He's up there in age. He's got an injury history. He's a 4-3 D end. I don't think that makes sense either. So, no, I'll, I'll say no to both. Jim Schwartz. What's going on, Mr. Jim Schwartz? Jim Schwartz, by the way, you want to talk about a guy who I think has the most punchable face in football in terms of a coach? It's Jim Schwartz. But I do respect Jim Schwartz. I think he's a good coordinator. And the Giants almost hired you, Jim, um, when we were going through the hiring process, when we decided not to go with you. And we ended up going with Pat Shermer. <laughs> Judge is in concussion protocol after getting KO. Jim, that is that is fake news. That is, that is not accurate. That is false. That did not happen. Did not happen. Okay, Jim? And you don't need to keep spreading it, Jim. Okay? I know you're upset that we didn't hire you to be the head coach. But we don't need you coming on here and spreading false information, Jim. Okay? Get back to the Eagles. Um, let's see what we got here. At least I actually didn't get punched. That is true, Jim, but neither did Judge. It's fake news. It's fake news. Um, you went big on us, Chris. You can't even see my chats anymore. You still only have 200 people in here. Now I see you, Nick. I just saw it. I just saw it, Nick. And I apologize that I can't that I can't see your chat, man. Uh, let's see what we got here. Clock says, hey, bro, I think we can. I think we can choo-choo. I don't know what that means, Clocks. I don't know. I I don't know if he I don't know if he's if he's making fun of me because 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 I'm a positive Giants fan. And the clocks, I'll say, hey bro, I think we can never. I think we can never choo choo. Nothing will ever work. Choo choo. Uh, what's going on, Mahabha man? Thanks for popping in the stream. He says, hey man, early stream. Hey man, early stream. That's right, Trevor. Uh, early stream. Big news came out today. I asked you guys on Twitter if you guys wanted me to make, make, make a video or go live and. I, I decided we'll go live and uh, talk about it. Harden to the Nets. I will say no, but they'd be a hell of a team if they got them. Chris, do you like Landon Collins or Jabril Peppers better? I like Peppers better. I like Peppers better. Benny Breeze. Yeah, you got to get a wrench. You've been here forever. There you go, Benny. There's your wrench. Um, more midday streams, please. Listen, when there's reason to when there's reason to do a midday stream word, I'll do it. Um. Maybe I'll do this more often. Maybe once a week, twice a week, I'll do a midday stream. But I don't want to just do it to do it. You know, I want to do it when there's actual news that came out. So we got something to talk about. 
Um, but when there's something worth talking about, yeah, I'll do a midday stream. It just so happened that it worked out. I was walking my dog. I said, hey, I'll go live. People are going to want to talk about this. I'll go live. Let's see what we got here. Thomas Repair at left tackle. I'll stick with Thomas uh, at, at the left tackle. I think Thomas is getting progressively better, but I want to see Parrot in the lineup. I want to see Parrot in the lineup. Yeah, Rowan, this blew up, man. We had like 1,100 people in here, man. It's big news. People want to talk about it. But, um, again, I'm going to be live tonight, by the way. Any Hoops fans, come on back. If you haven't done so, subscribe, ring the bell. I'm going to go live for another 5, 10 minutes. We'll close it out at about 2.30. Thomas just says, do you think the firing will affect the play of the line? Sorry if you answered already. I don't think anybody's actually asked me that exact question, Tommy. Um, do I think it's going to affect the play of the line? I don't think so, no. Um, because from the sounds of it, Joe Judge was the guy that was teaching these guys, was basically just as involved as Columbo over the last couple of weeks. So I don't think it will. I don't think Judge would have made – Judge is a very smart guy. I don't think Judge would have made this decision if he thought it was going to affect the play of the line. He did it because he thought the play of the line was being affected. So I think this was a, uh executive decision by Judge, and I, I'm all aboard, man. I believe in Joe Judge. I think he's a smart guy, um, and, and I think he's making the right decision. I believe in what he's doing. Um, so yeah, I, I, I like the move. I, I went over all the accomplishments uh, that this guy has throughout the stream, but I, I like the move. Coach Googs is definitely a very good offensive line coach. Riley, man, thank you very much. I appreciate it, man. He says, Hey, Chris, a little late, but why was he fired? Okay. So the reports that are, what's up, Trevor, man. Thanks for popping the stream. So the reports that are coming out was that judge had to uh, sp pay more attention to the offensive line over the last two or three weeks. That's what's coming out. He didn't like the way that Colombo was teaching the team. Colombo didn't like the way that they were shifting offensive linemen in and out. It seemed like they had a disagreement. He brought in Googs to be an assistant last week, actually, but he was, you know, in the, in the COVID testing protocol from what people have told me. Um, and Colombo apparently wasn't buying in. So Judge decided to move on. And and I, I did a video on Googs. If you guys want to go back and look and get more, more in-depth information about it, um, I posted it on Twitter. I think it was the last thing I posted. So if you want to see the video, you could go there. But – Googs is a very accomplished offensive line coach. He's a guy that coached with Miami last year, and he's a guy that's coached with Judge before. So there's ties there. I think it makes sense. Did Joe throw hands? No, that's fake, Swag Waffles. That did not happen. Um, What do you think about DeAndre Baker, Old Worm says? What do I think about uh, DeAndre Baker? I am not surprised he's not back. I thought it was Joe Judge's decision. There's another guy. There's another instance. Joe Judge doesn't take it, doesn't take nonsense. That was strictly a Joe Judge decision. Like, a lot of people came out and said, How, you know, Gettleman, you know, they screw up. Gettleman didn't bring him out. That had nothing to do with Gettleman. If it was up to Gettleman, DeAndre Baker's still on his team. Dave Gettleman traded up to get DeAndre Baker. That was a Joe Judge-influenced decision. Joe Judge viewed him probably much similar to Mark Colombo. He said, this guy ain't buying in. We don't need him. Uh, reports came out even, you know, outside of the fact that he was going out to a party with tons of people just as COVID started. Outside of that, also, reports came out that he wasn't showing up to voluntary meetings. And he didn't have the best first impression last year. So, Joe Judge probably viewed it and he said to himself, I don't need this guy in this football team. I think that's what happened. Much like he thinks about Mark Colombo. Um, will you stream any games this week? If yes, who? Yeah, uh, well, I got to see who I get. You know, I, I, I didn't look at the TV programming. But if the Eagles game's here, I'm going to stream that game. Uh, I'm doing good, man. How about you? The whole reason the O-line was doing good was because of Judge. Yeah, that's what came out after the fact, Trevor. What's going on, Michael Martinez, man? Thanks for popping the stream. Uh, let's see what we got. Take your shirt off. You get a couple of weirdos on the internet. Not many people come to a New York Giants stream to see me take my shirt off. Okay, then. Uh, let's see what we got here. Let's see what we got here. Need to change uh, charge extra for that, Glenn says. Yeah, charge extra for that, yeah. Uh, let's see what we got here. Would they trade Barkley? No, we're not We're not trading Barkley. We're, we're not trading Barkley. What's up, Jasmine? Thanks for popping the stream, Jasmine. Uh, Michael Martinez says, do you think the Yankees will get Trevor Bauer? I'm hoping the Mets do. But I think, I think there's going to be an arms race. I think both teams are going to be going hard after. My man Rudy's in the chat. Rudy, I got to get back. I got to get you on. I got two hats I got to give out, but I got to get to you on Instagram. Uh, I keep forgetting. I'll do that this week, but you know I'll get it out to you. Um, let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Riley Dixon on the COVID list. Is that accurate? I hope not. My God, that would mean our punter and our kicker up. 
You have to get the Tana only fans. Yeah, the Tana only fans for that. Justin says, yeah. <laughs> What's up, Michael Judge? Man, thanks for popping the stream, man. Um, please leave your shirt off. It's staying on, James. It's staying. On, I promise you. The hoodie stay. The hoodie doesn't come off. We play well when I wear the hoodie. Um, they still think you're a. I know, authentic. I got people in here asking me to take my shirt off. But me. What's? Oh God. Bavith, one of my ultimate trolls. He's been with my channel forever. And now he's got people thinking I go to male orgies. Bavith says, thanks, Chris. I enjoyed the old male, male orgy last night. Bavith, you son of a bitch. Uh, Manny says, now will you take it off? No, Manny. No, I will not take it off. I will not take it off, Manny. Absolutely not. Um... <laughs> What's up, Anthony Martinez, man? Thanks for popping the stream, man. Them legs, though, KS says. Uh, Stanley says, hey, Chris, do you think the Knicks will drift Kira Lewis? Because I think he's the best player in the draft. I think it's possible. Um, I think I, he's a point guard. I, that's definitely a need. I've seen Halliburton a lot. Um, I'll give my opinions tonight on who I think they should draft. Well, I think it's the shooting guard. That's who I would take. That's what, that's what I've consistently said. But we'll see. Um... Let's see, what's up, Nikki Sab Chris? I totally ship you and Hub and Pest as a three. Oh, God. <laughs> what's up, Luis, man? Thanks for popping the stream, man. Uh, Tana, will did, did, Riley, did, did Riley Dixon really get COVID? I hope not. I hope not. Uh, Michael says, do you think the Mets will make the playoffs next year? Yes. Yes, I think the Mets will make the playoffs next year. Take your shirt off and do the truffle shuffle. <laughs> oh, oh, man. So... I mean, it makes sense. They pro they're probably in the special teams room together, so that makes sense. Wow, the Giants could be at a huge disadvantage this week if those two are not back. Wow, uh, that's not good. Uh, between Gano, that's not good. Um, hopefully, they're back before the game. That is not good. Book Alaman, how much to burn the hat? I'm getting a new hat actually next week. I've been uh, putting that off. I'm getting a new hat next week. This hat, oh, the Mets hat, I'm not burning it, but I'm going to have a new Giants hat uh, in all my videos next week. I keep meaning to buy one, and I just keep forgetting to do it. Um, have I done any research on Cole Anthony? Yes. He's going to be a second, uh, late first-round pick probably um, from what I've seen. Theoretically speaking, if you if you took the shot, would you show us your – Oh, God, Trevor. I love trolls. I love trolls. Um, I believe the Giants could go six and ten and win the division. I agree. It's going to come down to if the Eagles lose their next five, which they could, or four out of five, which they definitely could. Frank says, "Leave your shirt on." Thanks, all love. Of course, I'm leaving my shirt on, Frank. Of course, I'm leaving my shirt on. The hoodie doesn't come off. Cuso, man, he says, "Take it off, baby." <laughs> Take the hat off. All right, there you go. You see my, you see my crazy, my crazy moss right now. There you go, my crazy hat moss. I'm getting a haircut actually next week um, for my brother's uh, wedding. So there you go. Uh, okay, how about the uh, how about the pan? Oh god, you guys are crazy, guys! It's two twenty-eight. I know we're, we're having fun. We're having fun, but guys, I didn't want this to go more than an hour. We went an hour and a half. I just want to say thank you to everybody. Thank you guys for all the love, all the support. Thank you guys for coming by during your work day, school day. Hopefully you guys are not skipping school. But thank you to everybody who's in here showing support, hanging out, supporting the channel. I got to give Odell Beckham a quick shout out. Odell Beckham says, Riley Dixon, a long snapper, have been, and the long snapper have been placed on the COVID list due to close contact to gain. Should be ready for the Bengals. I hope they're ready for the Bengals game because that would be a huge, 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 huge loss uh, between him and Gano. We're going to need both those guys back. Um, and Kreider's the long snapper. Um, who's a former all pro, uh, pro bowler. So hopefully all those guys are back because we need them. But thank you guys so much for all the support. Um, I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Like I said, if you're an NBA fan, you want to come by, have a good time tonight. I'll be calling the uh, NBA draft. We'll be hanging out. We'll be talking about the Knicks picks, everything else. Um, yeah, we'll have some fun. But thank you guys so much for being here. We'll talk soon. And as always, if you like what you watch, please subscribe. Drop a comment. Maybe give me a little thumbs up. Cheers.